Hello again. So let's continue our discussion here um, by getting taking the integral over all wave numbers in, for this equation that we had. Okay, so this case we know that we have decaying turbulence, okay? So take, let's take integral over all wave numbers for decaying turbulence decaying homogeneous turbulence so if we take the integral um, so for the first term we know that when you take the integral of this this term we're going to have K, which is the kinetic energy, turbulent kinetic energy. So I can just write it down. You're going to have partial K over partial T, okay? And then we have the second term, which is going to be the integral from zero to infinity of T K T DK, which is for the energy transfer. And then, then we have the last term, which I showed at as minus 2. If you take the integral, it's going to be minus 2 k squared e, right? If you take the integral of that, we call that uh, epsilon. We show that with epsilon. And epsilon is actually shows the rate of dissipation. because it's related to the viscous, right, viscous term. And what is this term? This term is actually nonlinear transfer term. And it looks, it's kind of like the uh, transport terms that we investigated in, um, in the turbulent kinetic energy budget and in this kind of decaying turbulence this is going to be zero because it if you take the integral over all the wave numbers because it only transfers energy from one wave number to another but the sum of all the terms of this is going to be zero It only transfers energy, okay? So Kolmogorov actually had an idea for this term. So he stated that, so this is Kolmogorov's idea. He states that, and he hypothesized that TKT, this term, takes energy out at low wave numbers and puts it in at high wave numbers. So we will come back to this idea, but the idea is that the, the total energy transfer in the system, if you take the uh, integral from zero to infinity for all wave numbers, is going to be zero, okay? So now I want to further uh, give some more insights into this equation that we had here, that we derived here. Okay, so let's take a look at, let me plot these uh, so we can better understand. Let's say we want to plot the energy spectrum.
So if you plot energy spectrum at low wave numbers, and this is wave number K, at low wave numbers, we are going to have energy peak and then energy and then it's going to we are going to have a decrease at higher wave numbers and then we will have dissipation so this energy that is producing large scales will be dissipated at lower wave numbers okay so this will actually be ek the energy uh, 3d energy spectrum function at k as a function of k and then we have these uh this nonlinear uh this uh, dissipation term on the right hand side which we show that with d or dissipation, dk. Okay, so this is actually d. We show this with dk, or dissipation. So this region, uh, we call this region actually where we don't have this energy, that much energy as inertial sovereign. So I will come back to this, what this, this means call this inertial subrange. So at low wave numbers here, we have energy production range, and then here we have energy dissipation range, and at the, in the intermediate level, we have energy uh, inertial subrange. So I will come back to this again later, a little bit. But before that, I want to talk about this energy, separ this separation between EK and DK. So DK is actually... If you remember, dk is 2 nu k square e, right? It's 2 nu k squared e k t, okay? So it's just this e that we have, but multiplied by 2 nu k squared, so it's clear if you multiply it by k square, it's going to be, um, it goes to a higher, higher wave numbers, right? At higher wave numbers, it's going to be larger. But this separation between dk and ek also really depends on this new and in general on Reynolds number. So in general, if we decrease if we increase Reynolds number, this separation is going to be larger. If we increase Reynolds number, this separation is going to be larger. And the reason is, when Reynolds number is larger, it's typically we have lower, lower nu, right? Typically, because Reynolds number is u over ul over nu, right? So this nu should be lower. And what does this mean? This means that in order for this 2 nu k square ekt in order for this to to balance with the same e to balance with the same e K has to increase, right? Because you are decreasing this new, right? 
And so you need to increase this K to balance this E and D, right? We have it here in this equation. Um, this E and D, we want them to be to, to balance with each other. So in order for this energy to balance, we need K to increase. And so this kind of separates this energy uh, production and dissipation from each other. And that's very interesting phenomenon. And that's actually what, what we are interested in because we want this, um, the Kolmogorov, uh, we will come back to this idea. So let me, let me show another thing and then I will talk about it. Um, so what happens if the Reynolds number is lower? If it decreases Reynolds number instead of increasing that? So what we are going to have is something like this. So we have K here, and energy here, energy a spectrum. What happens as you decrease the Reynolds number, these two energy production and dissipation will be kind of mixed together. So we don't have that much separation anymore. So this will be E and this is D. So as you decrease Reynolds number, these two will be kind of combined and kind of mixed with together. So it's kind of a reverse effect, right? You, when you decrease Reynolds number, it's like you increase this new. And so when you would increase this new, this K should decrease, right? So they have to become closer to each other. But now the interesting thing is about when you increase Reynolds number, say where your Reynolds number is very large, then we will have this separation between energy production and energy dissipation scales. And then we will have this region, which is very interesting, and we will investigate it in the Kolmogorov theory, which is called inertial subrange, where we don't have neither that much energy production and no nor energy dissipation. And we only have transfer of energy from larger scales to lower to uh, smaller scales. And this is called actually inertial subrange. And we are going to find kind of a rule that's going to, that's applied and we can use it in this inertial subrange. And that's kind of Kolmogorov's idea, okay? So now <clears throat> let's take a look at um, these terms again. I wanna show these terms again. Um, and look at the original equation that we derived and add one more term to, to talk a little bit more about this Kolmogorov's idea for transferring energy at low wave numbers and puts them <coughs> into high wave numbers. So let's see uh, what does that mean. So let me write this equation again. So we have this equation but now I want to add another term to this um, to be a little bit more general. So we have this equation. So we have this uh, transport, but I want to also add a production term and show it with PKT. And then subtract DKT, which is the dissipation, okay? so. I don't want to write it down again, but this is dissipation. And this is production term if we have mean shear. If we have mean shear, then we are going to have production, right? Okay. So now let's investigate these terms. Um, so if I want to show the balance of equation for these terms, I'm going to get something like this. So let's go through that. So 
So here we have wave number again, and here we have the balance of the equation, of this equation. I want to show at each wave number, which of these terms are more dominant, okay? So first of all, let's look at the energy production. So at lower wave numbers, based on this idea of Kolmogorov, we have energy production. So at lower wave numbers means that at large scales, we have this energy production, okay? So we have something like this. This goes up. And then, and then this goes down, and then at inertia subrange, if you have high Reynolds number, this will be about zero, and then at higher wave numbers, this energy will be dissipated through dissipation. Okay? So this term is actually PK, the production term, and this is minus DK, or the dissipation term, okay? So this energy uh, tendency term, we can show it with this. It's, it's typically small. It's typically small, it's not that big, uh, especially when you have quasi-equilibrium state. So it's kind of a little bit, um, it's, it looks like something like this. So this is partial E over partial T. And then we have this transport term or transfer term. So let's see what is ener this energy transfer term. And what does this do? Based on Kolmogorov's idea and also based on some uh, measurements and uh, also simulations, we can show that this term looks like this. Actually, subtracts energy from large scales based on Kolmogorov's idea. Right? Takes takes out this energy. And then puts it back into higher wave numbers. So this is TK term. Let me do it a little bit like this. Because the sum of these terms should be zero at each point, at each um, wave number, because we are doing the balance of the equations, right? So at each wave number that you look at it, like here, at this wave number, or this wave number, or this wave number, we are just showing all these terms here, so they should be zero, the sum of those terms. 
So as you see, this term TK actually transport is a transport or transfer term that takes energy here. So let me show you with this color. So it takes energy at lower wave numbers and then puts it back at larger wave numbers, okay? So let's see what does this mean. I mean, if I want to show this physically to you, what it means is this idea of turbulence is that like you have these large eddies, okay? And these large eddies are eddies that are energy containing, right? So these eddies are all energy containing. And then, these eddies, uh, these large eddies actually produce uh, turbulence, right, at um, these large scales. And then, um, through this transfer term, they are kind of transferred into smaller scales, and at smaller scales, these eddies are all getting dissipated, like through heat or other things. So they, they get uh, very small and then they get dissipated at lower, at smaller scales, okay? So this is the whole idea. So at large scales or lower wave numbers, we have energy production here. So energy production. And then through cascade of energy from large scales to smaller scale, which occur to this transfer term, we have energy dissipation at smaller scales. Okay, so this is kind of the concept and the whole idea of uh, this. And now I want to um, Take a look at, at the integral of this equation that we investigated, right? So I wanna actually look at this, uh, this equation that we had. So let's take an integral of this equation and take a look at it again. So we have this term here. So this is wave number. So now if we take the integral of um, this equation that we had here, which is this, this term, what we are going to get. So I'm going to go through each of these terms and then one by one, we are going to derive that. So let's do it here. So let's first look at the first part of this, which is up to here, which we call um, this part, which we call actually the production range, okay? So let's look at that. So integrate. Production range.
So in the production range, we know that uh, here, based on this, um, we can say that in the production range, TK plus PK is almost zero, right? So we don't, we can kind of neglect that tendency term. So let me, let me write it here. So in production range, energy production range, we can assume that TK plus PK, which is production plus trans transfer is almost uh, zero. So this week, we say it's smaller than KE, and let's say KE is somewhere around here. So when KE is smaller than KE, this is what's going to happen. So what we are going to get is the integral from zero to KE of TK equals to minus the integral from zero to KE of PK or production. And this is, we call this P total, which is the total production in uh, the turbulent flow, okay? So here, let's, uh, let me just show the, what we call spectral flux and this is actually E, K, K, and T. And don't confuse this with uh, dissipation. It's different. And it is defined as minus the integral from 0 to K of T, K, T, D, K, which is just the integral of this uh, T, K term that we had here, right, this term minus of that integral. And remember, this is from zero to K, okay? So it's a little bit different. It's not, uh, it's just like, you take the integral from here to here, Let's say, let me show it from, like from each case, say up to here, you take the integral and then you write the number, okay? Or from here up to here, you take the integral here, which would be the area of this, and then you, you write the number, okay? So if you take it from zero to here, it's going to be zero, which is uh, kind of consistent with what we said before. So let's say, for the first part, we just, we take this integral and it's the minus sign of that. So it's going to be positive here. So it's going to increase to a level up to here. Let me show, okay, we have up to here, it's going to increase. To here then it's going to get a plateau here so we are going to have something like this and then here it reaches a plateau and then after that it's going to decrease because we have a negative sign here so it's going to decrease to here Okay, something like this.
Okay, so here is in the production range where we still have this increase in the in this term before reaching to that plateau. Okay, so we call this production range. Also, as I said here, they call this energy containing range. So energy, also energy containing range or scale. Scale. And then, so here we have this. So if you take the integral of this, this is going to be the p total. So the total, uh, the total production. So from zero to ke, you are going to get it here. So this is going to be the total production of the system. the turbulent kinetic energy. So also we call this spectral flux. So in case you want to know if you hear that, because it's kind of the flux uh, of energy, but shown in spectral um, wave number, and free wave number space, okay? So then we have what I also called inertial subrange or so here where we reach to this plateau so it's called inertial subrange so here as you see the transport term or transfer term doesn't do anything okay, it's also zero there and it gets to kind of a plateau so in this range where we call inertial subrange As you see here, transfer is about zero. So TK is about zero. And so if you integrate inertial subrange, We, there is not there is not much there, so I will do that uh, later. What what does that what does that mean? Okay, because it's just zero. But I will do it later to show also uh, what does that mean. And then at the end we have this dissipation range K D, where now. energy or TKE is puts is, is back right so this transfer is actually putting back uh, the this spectral flux is actually taking the energy from production range and puts it back into the dissipation range okay so in the dissipation range We have, based on here, only TK equals to DK. So TK equals to DK when K is greater than KD. So let's now integrate the dissipation range. What we are going to get The integral from KD to infinity, TK, DK 
equals to the integral from kd to infinity of dk dk okay and the other thing we knew from before and i showed it here is this that the integral from zero to infinity of tk is zero so this means that the integral from zero to ke of tk dk should equal to minus let let me write it this way is easier plus the integral from let's say kd to infinity we know the integral from ke to kd here is zero right because we don't have the, anything you can write it down let, let me write it down kd to let's say ke to kd tk dk plus the integral from kd to infinity of tk dk and this equals to this a spectral flux that we defined ek I, I will let me no let me show it again so this equals to zero okay so here you know this is almost zero because this is in this uh, inertial subrange so we don't have that much uh, energy transfer here right so this means that the integral from zero to ke uh, tk dk equals to minus the integral from kd to infinity of tk dk which equals to This number here and let's say we have an m here km here so it's going to be the spectral flux at km and t okay so here I just wanted to give you some insight on these terms and actually how, what do they mean uh, physically. So we learned about this production range, inertial subrange and dissipation range and how does energy is being transferred from large scales to smaller scales and what is the role of this uh, transfer term, spectral transfer term uh, that we learned here at each of these scales and uh, it actually transfers energy based on this Kolmogorov's idea from large scales and then puts it back into smaller scales and high or higher wave numbers so from lower wave numbers to higher wave numbers so as you see now this gives uh, makes a lot of sense this is actually an interesting theory uh, that's actually one of the few th theories that we have in turbulence and how the energy transfer and energy cascade is actually uh, being uh, explained. So these 3D spectral functions actually help us to kind of simplify this equation that we got um, to this uh, simpler equation, and we, we could gain some insights into how, what, what does this equation mean and what, of, what uh, each of these terms actually uh, mean in this equation. So in the next lectures, I'm going to go through the Kolmogorov's uh, theory uh, in the inertial subrange. So he, he gets some uh, uh, kind of relation for this spectral flux uh, in uh, inertial subrange. 
and we are going uh, as which is known as minus five third rule. So we will we will talk about it and discuss it in the uh, next lecture.